enough. Good evening, everybody. It is Wednesday night, and you know what that means. It is time for the silliest wrestling show on this here hallowed ground of Twitch.tv. I am your host and last bastion of the Vaudeville show, Eden, and joining me, as always, the short king of the long tangent, Zach. How are you doing this evening? I like how you say, as always, as if I haven't done it, like, you know, as if I haven't, like, taken a break for the past, like, two weeks. <laughs> I mean, we all took a break. <laughs> the, the, shut up. We all took a break. <laughs> For the last week because it was too hot and then we did have neil on the week before but i mean like when i, I think say i took a break the year the year i think i took a break the week before that as well i that think i don't true. think i've done I it on, i was on weeks. my own i was on my own the week before that so yeah you yeah, are officially a, a guest host again um yeah. you are a returning champion of wrestling is silly i mean How i feel like i just took a it, it was more of a mental health break too much too much wrestling getting with you yeah yeah I, yeah, I get it. Are you, are, you, are, you in a, are you in a better place now for some for some yeah. stupid graps? Please. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm, the unbridled enthusiasm. Yeah, well, you, you've got all the enthusiasm. If I'm also too enthusiastic, it feels fake and stupid. That's true. That's very true. Uh, if if it was all it, if it was all all go was all, enthusiasm. all the time everyone would be like well this is stupid clearly they're faking it <laughs> <laughs> that's true that is true um yeah you, you yeah you also need to wind up yeah you, you need to take two weeks off to wind up for a good rant for a good for a good yeah. tangent have you got have you got something prepared for us? i actually don't have a massive rant today which i know is really rare i feel like i'm i'm coming back and i've pitched a a softball is not a baseball term. <laughs> you've, hit, you've hit a foul ball. No, not a no, 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 not a foul ball. I don't feel like I've come out the gate that badly, but I do sort of feel like you know, it's been a bit of a pathetic pitch. I don't have, I don't have any particularly burning. I don't have any particular burning rage inside me. That's good at the I moment. Mean... I enjoy I enjoy a lack of burning rage because it means that you're generally in a good place and you don't need. To... Oh, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. My brain has been entirely replaced with thinking about Final Fantasy fourteen. But I suppose you know if you want to consider that to be in a good place, yeah, sure. I mean, you're enjoying, in a great place. if you're enjoying doing it, then, then it feels like a good. Yeah, place but to it me. consumes my every waking moment. So you, you, you have this you have this strange uh you're not allowed to be a fan of things. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't I think you take it too far the other way. Because like it consumes my every thought and you're like, yeah, you're just a fan, as if everybody that's ever been a fan of anything is like that into it. Okay, you're not just a fan, but Yeah, I know. But... Tell me about it. You the are brain worms. They're no, 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 me. no, no. But like you, you, I have seen, I have seen plenty of other people doing this for other things. Like, like people do it with Doctor Who, people do it with Star Trek, people do it for like all other Final Fantasy games. It is not an un, unreasonable level of being a fan of a thing. No, I suppose. Like, how do you think fanfic that's longer than the Bible gets written by people that are just normal yeah, about things? True. Nah. That's true. Yeah, they are really normal about it. That, that, everybody does that. Every, everybody writes some fanfic longer than the Bible on occasion as a little treat. <laughs> you know, oh, spe speaking of long fanfics, you know, for the longest time, the longest piece of recorded fiction was a Super Smash Brothers fanfic. Uh, that is ringing a bell. Well, for the longest time, the world's longest piece of um recorded fiction was uh, a super smash brothers fan fiction that was 4.1 million words um, i mean in their defense it that is a lot of characters it's a lot to of give a I mean, decent amount of screen time that was that for. was start, it was started written i think it was started being written when brawl came out so that's a, that's a substantially smaller roster wow. um but that has been subsumed by another fan fiction that is no oh joke God. four times longer 16 million words. I'm fucking sorry. Uh, Girl, 16 gotta... million words, and you would never in a million years guess what fandom is. Is it the... Owl House? It's not the Owl House. Good shout. It's not the Owl House. Um. Steven Universe. 
It's not Steven Universe. You're getting further away with Steven Universe. Okay. Gravity Falls? No. Still getting Shit. further away. Shit. I don't, think I, don't it's, I don't think it's a show that you've even heard of, because the only reason I've heard of it is because I watched an LS Mark video about it a few days ago. Not the fan oh, fiction. Oh, okay. The, not the fan fiction, the cartoon. The show. Okay, so it is a cartoon. It is a cartoon, and because it's an LS Mark video, it was a Nickelodeon cartoon. Yeah, shit. I, the thing is, I wasn't a Nickelodeon kid. No. This so, is a, like... And here's the thing. This is a recent Nickelodeon cartoon. Oh my god, they've only started fucking... They've started fucking writing 60 million words recently? No, that's insane. Yeah. That that can only have been written by a child. <laughs> because only children have that level of time to invest. I, I have no idea. It is The Loud House. Oh, piss! <laughs> <laughs> See how close you were with The Owl House? I was so close! <laughs> And yes, uh, yes, Neil, one person, one person wrote all 16 million words and is still, it is still being updated daily. Um, Jesus Christ. When did they start writing it? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to find the Loud House revamped. I don't think it's got many spelling mistakes because... Uh, I mean, to be fair, if it's written in Microsoft Word, that'd catch most Yeah. Of um, <laughs> by uh, James Dean fifty eight forty two, what a what a username! Incredible. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> oh his bio. As you all know, the Loud House revamp is the biggest story ever and holds the record for largest fanfic ever known in the world, and it's still growing to the day. Um, oh, Jesus, it is currently currently sixteen point seven million words. Um, it is a, apparently a, a humor romance um, fanfic uh, with a Lincoln I mean, Loud I... slash original character ship. Oh, I mean, a incredible uh, go off king. Uh, I go love it when king. people do ship stuff, and it's like clearly them. <laughs> oh, it's written like a script. Holy shit! They've written. Oh, it, it's Jesus. not. That's actually more impressive that it's written in script format and it's still sixteen for fucking million words. That's pretty nuts because you can't even really do filler on that. Yeah, that is that is incredible, and it all seems pretty like I don't I don't see many. Uh, let me let, let's uh, let's bring up the look at this thing. Uh, I don't see many like like it's it's it seems just like a like i don't see many spelling mistakes i don't see many um okay does it make sense now we can't be holding them to impossibly high demands like that um, okay no i, I don't say so, right okay so i don't mean like does it make like you know fucking like fanfic sense where like you know characters act in character and all that shit now i, I just mean like is it Definitely not AI slop is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think it's AI slop because it was start like it got. I, I, it was first published November sixth, twenty seventeen, so it predates ChatGPT okay. by a by a long stretch. Um, yeah, well, that doesn't mean they've not padded for time. For let's let's go to the latest. Ch let's go to the latest chapter, which is holy shit! I'm still scrolling. Uh, oh wow, we've got into four digits. Uh, will I will I hit two thousand? Will I hit two thousand? We are. Oh, we're in two thousand two thousand three hundred and twenty eight chapters. Um, Jesus Christ! The last. Dude. This was the last update. It is the twenty twenty four New Year's recap. Uh, oh shit! This is the final chapter of Loud House revamped. <gasps> Oh, so they have finished it. It's finished. It's finished. Uh, Caleb I was going to say that. Holster his twin picks, pistols. Wow, this has gotten big. This is this is supposed to be loud house shit. <laughs> 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 we want you to fucking look at it. This is not loud house. Is a kids show. There's large swats. I don't, There's large. I don't think that's canon compliant. No, it's not honest. canon compliant. There's oh, it's it's gone into like pros. At the end here, and there, okay. are, there are there are chunks in Japanese. Of um, yeah, that's intense. <laughs> this, yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> wow. So yeah, this is the biggest, the longest ever piece of of, of uh, recorded fiction. It is Loud House fan fiction. I don't know how I got onto that. 
but that wasn't That's even nuts, that wasn't to be even, wasn't even the story I was intended to bring to you today. Um, oh shit! You've got another story. <laughs> I've got for another me? Go story. Uh, it is it's, it's July the fourth tomorrow, uh, the day where America America's the most. Yeah. Most famously, there is a hot dog eating contest on Coney Island called Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, and yeah. um, oh yeah, that's how we got there because uh, you're not insanely fandom brain wormed because you haven't written 16 million words um, that is true i don't think i'll ever achieve that Go so on. so uh, the coney island nathan's hot dog eating contest is famous renowned across america for being the best thing in in the competitive eating calendar yeah. usually it's the one it's the one competitive eating event that america cares about every year and are you familiar with a man called joey chestnut the name rings a bell. Joey Chestnut is like the the big guy, the Cristiano Ronaldo of the hot dog eating world. Yeah. Um, has eaten the most hot dogs in the world. Is he the guy that does the wiggle? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. No, he's not the one that does the wiggle. The one that does the wiggle is a little Japanese man. Um... Uh, he might be called Joey Chestnut. You don't know. No, that's that's uh, Takaru Tsunami Kobayashi, and it's the Kobayashi. Oh my wiggle. god, his middle name is Tsunami. He's so <laughs> fucking cool. It was the Kobayashi Wiggle. Um, was was what that was called. And Joey Chestnut is the man that dethroned Kobayashi. Um, that's why I know without, his name. Without right. needing okay, the wiggle. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he is like world renowned, has won every year for a bajillion years. And yeah. then this year he announced that he has been banned from the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest this, with no explanation. So he will not okay. be appearing. And that is like if the WWE banned The Rock from attending WrestleMania. Um, it. Which, it just wouldn't fucking happen. It's a PR disaster. Um, yeah, it is a PR disaster. And people are like, why, Joey? Why are you not going to be... Why, you not, why aren't they allowing you in? And he's like, because I took a sponsorship from Impossible Foods. And I promoted Impossible Hot Dogs. Um, which, you know, for the man that's eaten the most beef hot dogs in the world, um, promoting fake meat is a weird move. It's a weird lateral move. Um, but because is it? I mean he's eaten so much beef um, yeah. don't worry we'll get back to that um, okay. so because Nathan's is the brand of hot dog that they eat in the contest they don't want him to like be sponsored by another brand of hot dog so they're not allowing him in the contest because he's sponsored by Impossible okay um, and everyone was like, what the fuck, dude? He's still going to eat Nathan's hot dogs in the contest. It's not like he's going to throw all your meat dogs aside and insist you bring him fake meat dogs. Um, so he has... So now, again, now the 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 contest is still going on. Joey Chestnutless. And meanwhile, Joey Chestnut has announced that he is going to do his own hot dog eating contest on July the 4th in Fort, wow. in Fort Bliss. It is uh, Joey Jaws Chestnut, world's greatest competitive eaters, Fort, Fort Bliss, 4th of July celebration. I mean, I I mean again, bring up, the, bring up the look at this thing so you can see the beautiful graphic that, that he made for this. Um, oh, this and is incredible. And he said, like, hey, Impossible Foods, I'm heading to Fort Bliss in El Paso on the 4th to do what I do best, military style. Because uh, he's he, this is he is competing against four soldiers that are stationed in Fort Bliss. And he's right. going to eat, eat more hot dogs than them. And he's like, while yeah. I'm crushing hot dogs, you want to come with me and feed the hungry crowd? That sounds great. Impossible. I'm going to give out a bunch of uh, free hot yeah. dogs to homeless people in El Paso. That's great. Um, yeah. Except here... He says, uh, this 4th of July will be a little different, but I'll still be eating a whole lot of all beef hot dogs. Yeah. He's sponsored by Impossible. He's asking yeah. Impossible to come and cater the event. He's still eating beef dogs on the fucking show. Yeah. Why are they okay with that? Why Why did he think that was a good idea? And if he's going to eat all beef dogs because... anyway, why is he banned from the fucking contest? I put it to you that they are not competitor markets. Are they not? No. Then, then why because are they sponsoring Joe Chestnut in the first place? Because somebody, because he eats the shape of hot dog. I don't fucking know. <laughs> he does eat. He does like eating meats in tubes. But like people, like you're doing your shopping, 
and say like, oh, you really fucking love Nathan's hot dogs or whatever, and they don't have any Nathan's hot dogs, you're not going for Impossible, but uh, Impossible hot dogs, are you? I mean, probably not. And if you only eat Impossible hot dogs and they don't have Impossible hot dogs, you're not going for Nathan's hot dogs, are you? I mean, definitely not. So they're not competitive markets. But like, I would have expected if Impossible was paying to sponsor Joey Chestnut, they would want him to eat their dogs competitively. You know? I mean, I'm going to be totally honest. I really don't think that it actually matters as long as the man is eating hot dog. <laughs> I, okay, in any other situation, I would say you're right. But with Impossible being specifically a meat replacement? Okay, but again, because they're not competitor markets, Impossible doesn't need him to be eating Impossible burgers. Or, sorry, Impossible hot dogs. That is going to throw me because I just <laughs> associate them with... He doesn't need to be eating Impossible hot dogs. He needs to be eating a hot dog shape. <laughs> he needs to be eating a tube a of, distance, of brown. <laughs> that from a distance... Like, basically, what you're looking for is for all of the branding to fill in the gaps in people's brains. Yeah, I mean, people I aren't going to watch him eating it and think, oh, that is a beef hot dog. They're going to look at it and go, that's a hot dog. And then there's going to be impossible branding all he's over the place. impossible shirt, yeah. And he's going to be wearing the impossible shirt. Like, <laughs> I don't... The impossible shirt sounds like it's far more dangerous than it is. Yeah, okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they shouldn't have fucking, you know, call themselves something stupid like that, okay? Because it makes conversations about them really hard. It does. <laughs> but okay, okay. So, the, the the branding will fill in the gaps. If he's eating a, 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 a meat tube in a bun, wearing an Impossible shirt, people are going to think, oh, that's, that's probably an Impossible hot dog because it would be fucking ridiculous to wear an Impossible t-shirt and eat a meat hot dog. I, but, but I he... think... To 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 what Neil said, like you know, if a person who loves beef so much, they like the fake meat. It's like a way of going. Oh, they mu it must be really good. The thing is, like, I don't think that that is how meat eaters think. I don't think they're thinking like that. I don't think that somebody who eats meat is ever considering a meat alternative. That's just no, not. No. Do you know what I mean? Like that. Like they're not. Impossible doesn't need to convince people to be vegetarian. It needs to convince vegetarians to buy their product. Yeah, it needs to convince vegetarians that this tasted this tastes like that thing that you haven't had in ten years. Yeah, like a, a food branding is never going to convince somebody to be vegetarian because the reasons that somebody is vegetarian is personal. Yeah. So. To, like to me, it's like it's a non-issue. I don't, I don't see how this is, like bothering anyone. <laughs> like, I understand why Nathan's was mad because, like, even if not a meal replacement, even if not like a meat replacement, it is still a like for like replacement, right? For the same reason, like I wouldn't, like I, I think they'd be upset if someone was sponsored by chicken hot dogs. Um, because it, no, like, but, okay, but chicken hot dogs, a meat hot dog, thing, an alternative also. meat hot dog. No, okay. To be honest, like hot dogs are all just an absolutely chaotic <laughs> mess of meat. But it another meat hot dog brand. Again, it's going back to the put yourself in the shoes of someone doing their shopping. If they don't have Nathan's, would they pick up your product as an alternative? Al Impossible hot dogs, they're not going to do that. But for another hot meat hot dog brand, they will. So yes, I understand why they would be like, you can't be sponsored by another meat brand. Like, that makes sense to me, but, like, impossible. It's like, again, it's not going to stop somebody picking up Nathan's. That's, that, I mean, that's true. Like, I, 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 I 100% see what you're saying. I, I think I would be on your side completely had Joey not specified that he was going to be eating all meat dogs. <laughs> That feels like that's just messy wording, because otherwise that the branding would have filled in all the gaps. I do think this is a net win for Impossible though, because this is the most anyone yeah. has talked about Impossible hot dogs in the history since, ever. Since like what Burger King teamed since, since them, I the think? Impossible Whopper, yeah, yeah. 
And I think. Um, I think. Like, do you want to? Okay. Do, like, just seriously, what I'm, I'm going to put on. Maybe it's a little tin foil hat time. Uh, but honestly, I think he specified because of. Or, or I'm going to say the word. Or I'm going to say. I think patriarchy. <gasps> Because, Patriarch. like, you can't tell me that, like, men don't have this massive raging stiffy for eating red meat all the time. That is it's true. It's what, like, barbecues and burgers are all, like, man foods and shit, right? Like, so I genuinely think that... Oh, and also being vegetarian is associated with, like, being weak, being feminine, being right? <laughs> so, yeah, right? So, basically, I think what's happened is... Like a bunch of the fucking guys that watch competitive eating have gone. Oh my god, he's such a fucking soy boy now, and he's like, uh, well, I don't want people to think of a massive raging soy boy now. So I'm just gonna clarify. Uh, yeah, I am eating the beef. I can't believe Joseph Gordon Chestnut is a soy boy. I mean, you know, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. We don't even know if the hot dogs that he eats are actually gonna be. Beef. No, he could have just said they're all beef and then, oops, no, impossible dogs, fuck you. But yeah, yeah, impossible, like it... impossible won the day. Yeah. yeah. What I what I what I, what I want them to do next year is the impossible, the Coney Island impossible meat tart dog eating contest across the road from the from the Nathan's tart dog eating contest. I would <laughs> I would be curious as to the texture of a an impossible hot dog. I don't think we can get impossible hot dogs here. We can get you. Uh, I can. I can get beyond hot dogs. You could try because beyond hot dogs. I could. I could feasibly see a reality where, like, the impossible hot dog does not have that like fake hot doggy smoothness to it the that paste. makes it harder to eat. <laughs> the grilled pasteness. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. I would like to try a, a an impossible hot dog. Holy shit, they've won. <laughs> they won. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, to be fair, like, I've already eaten... I think I've already eaten impossible meat replacement. <laughs> I, can't, I think it was a burger, but I can't remember. Yeah, like, a lot of, a lot of restaurants, they're, they're sort of... If they're, like, a predominant they, meat restaurant. Impossible really did... Uh, what's the word? Uh, was, corner the market very they well do. on restaurants and it's, stuff. It's, it's impossible or it's beyond. Those are the two. And I think um, beyond has gotten into shops more, but impossible has gotten into restaurants more. Yeah. So. But, so that's my fun you know. story about fake hot dogs. Yeah. Um, that was a fun story. Thank you for bringing it to me. And, and Joey Chestnut, not allowed to eat hot dogs anymore. <laughs> not allowed to eat hot dogs on Crony Island anymore. Banned for life. I think he should just go and like bring his own table and sit at the end, <laughs> and just be like, uh, uh, no, I'm, not, "I'm not part of the competition. I'm just here eating my lunch." Yeah, I'm, I'm just here and eating then... 64 hot dogs, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just as part of That's my lunch. That's what I do. That's what I do. Just oh, I've got I've got 20 minutes before the next event. Let me just gulp down 35 hot dogs. Yeah, completely non-competitively. Don't worry about it. I'm not here to compete. Yeah. Um. That'll be amazing. I feel like could you imagine, right, okay, like let's 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 entertain this notion. Let's say this actually uh let's say this actually happened, right? Could you imagine being the winner if somebody else that wasn't competing sat at the end of the table and ate more than you? <laughs> Just, that would be such a I wasn't officially victory. competing, but I did eat more than you. <laughs> yeah, right. Like it would just be such a <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I would do is if, if I was if I was Joseph Chestnut, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would not set up at the end of the table. I would set up in the crowd, staring at the man that's going to win, and eat more dogs than him without breaking eye contact, <laughs> and watch that, the crowd I, slowly turn around. I feel like that would make your eyes really dry. You're not to blink. It's not, oh, okay. a, it's not a staring contest. I'm pretty sure he said stare him down. Stare him down, but like, you're allowed to play. <laughs> okay, right. That's not really staring him down then, is it? <laughs> I mean, no, but... Go with me. Just let me have this. Okay, okay. I'm letting you have this. And then he has to stare at you as you out-eat him unofficially. 
and the yeah. crowd slowly realizes that Joey Chestnut is behind them eating lots of hot dogs. And they that love watching nuts. Joey Chestnut eat lots of hot dogs. That's why they're here. Yeah, I feel like if if they've gone to that event, like they're probably there for Joey Chestnut, you know. Yeah. They're there to watch Joey Chestnut eat a lot of hot dogs. Yeah. And what and Joey Chestnut will eat a lot of hot dogs, but apparently now in El Paso. Yeah. Known for the hot dogs, of course. And help feed the homeless, which is cool. We that like is that cool. for him. We do like that. We do like giving impossible hot dogs to homeless people. And other foods. You can give them other foods as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming they're not just getting the impossible hot dog. They might I'm get assuming any. they're getting something else as well, <laughs> I suppose. At least a bun. <laughs> well, no, I... Well... <laughs> I meant the hot dog in the bun. <laughs> okay, well, I just wanted to clarify. Yes, the hot dog and the bun. I didn't want to be accused of like slander and libel by <laughs> just implying the dogs impossible into homeless people's wood. hands. <laughs> <laughs> just this like slippery fucking meat replacement sausage right into the hands. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Park of the hell out, yeah. food. Thank you for joining. And following the channel at this fantastically timed moment. Welcome to, we're talking about Joey Chestnut, but apparently doing a wrestling show. Hi, welcome. Yeah, Shall yeah. we do some wrestling? We've got to, we've got to do the tangent first. Yeah. This when, is a good tangent. I would rate this quite tangent. highly on our tangent. This is, so. yeah, as tangents, as, as, as opening banter goes, this is one of our best. Yeah. But I think it's hey, time really, to do a wrestling. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, because it is two weeks until wrestling is silly heatwave the the fucking big event of the summer where we where we have our summertime silliness rumble we are uh, all our titles are on the line it's two weeks away so things okay, important are... question yeah important question even mm -hmm. uh, are we gonna have hot dogs at heatwave uh heatwave hot dogs gotta have heatwave hot dogs yeah um, I feel like we impossible should actually dogs. like have so yeah we should have some I mean I, again I don't think we've got impossible hot dogs here. No, we I might. I, I, I can give you a beyond hot dog. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll do that and then we'll have hot dogs on stream. Yeah, we'll we'll I'll, I'm, I might even put some hot dogs on the desk and in the, the stream. And the spare ones we can like fling out into the flat car park as our act of charity. Yeah, that is that's going to be our act of charity. <laughs> Jedi. Oh no, I'm half half an hour late for Wiz. Also realizing that means I have missed nothing. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why we do the opening tangent. Yeah. This is why we do the opening tangent. So everyone. Give a chance to get in. Yeah. So what wrestlers do you have? Excellent question. Our opening contest for this evening is a fantastic showing. Of all of the uh, of two of the most fantastic wrestlers on the roster, Garfield, as you know, is going for the world, the men's world championship at Heatwave against King, our current our current wrestling silly men's world champion. And to tune up, he is taking on all of the greats across the roster. This week, Garfield has challenged the impossible, the not the impossible. Not the impossible hot dog, the unthinkable <laughs> horse. Not the impossible hot dog, the unthinkable <laughs> horse. To a one on one. Who do you think is. Uh, Garfield's been on a bit of a hot streak lately, but the, the unthinkable horse is the unthinkable horse. I need to stop calling him the impossible horse. Um, yeah. Who do you think walks out with the win this, this week? Is it going to be Garfield? Is it going to be the horse? Uh, I think it's gonna be Garfield. I, I, I'm a real, I'm a Garfield fan. If Impossible uh, sponsors, would we change the name of the Unthinkables to Without, uh, the with, Impossibles? In a, in a fucking heartbeat, they would be the Impossible <laughs> Horse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done uh, repping Impossible as a brand. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think. I mean, I think it's Garfield. Who knows what the hell is going on with him? Uh, yeah, just at any real. given moment, and that level of that level of like, what's what's the fucking word? Unpredictability. Yeah. You know that. I mean, that's always going to get you places. You know. Yeah, for real. That is that is always gonna like you can't plan you can't plan for a match against Garfield. Yeah, um, exactly. There's there's no way to to get in the headspace of a of a beast like Garfield. So, shall we get down to the ring for the first time this evening? Yeah. Let's go. Ooh. 
Wrestling is silly. Your opening contest this evening is set for one fall with no time limit. Making his way to the ring first. From your darkest nightmares. Weighing in at 276 pounds. Garfield. Every stream is somebody's first exposure to both Garfield and the Unthinkable Horse. And now you're getting them both in the same ring. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. I'll tell you, every time, like, I have, like, uh, like, a friend, uh, a friend of mine will discover the stream, I'll just, like, have a click through, and I'll get, I'll get a message, bait, like, once every two weeks, somebody will go, holy shit, what is, what is that Garfield? Or, what the fuck <laughs> is that horse? Or, I love this horse. Um... And I'm just like, this is, this is the normal, this is the completely normal Garfield. This is the Garfield that we all remember from, from, the, from the comics, right? This is nothing, there's nothing unusual about this Garfield. This is what he always looked like. Yeah. People are crazy. Yeah. People are being gaslit by whatever, what's, what's his name? What is the Garfield man's name? Jim Davis. I wanted to say John yeah. Davis then, but I'm like, no, <laughs> that's the man from Corn, and John is the owner of Garfield. But I couldn't think of Jim Davis's name. You're all being gaslit by Jim Davis. This is what he's always looked yeah. like. Because what, what what you don't know about Garfield the comic is that is based on a true story. This is the the entity that is real, and Jim Davis is 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 sanitizing him for the Garfield comic books. And yeah, some people have never seen Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh, he he'll come around soon. Winnie the Pooh will, will be back soon. Um, but we're it. <laughs> we do not. Yeah, we do not speak of him. This is this is Garfield's show right now. It'll be Winnie the Pooh show soon. So Garfield, as you know, going for the World Championships against King in two weeks' time. But before then, he's got to go through this impossible creature. And his opponent from out of this world, weighing in at 500 pounds, the unthinkable horse. Everyone loves the horse. The unthinkable horse and the unthinkables in general have been a little bit off kilter recently since um I was guessing for for, for for a good couple of months now. It's been it's been they've been more unpredictable than than usual, which is, you know, a high bar. But you can always rely even if the rest of them are a little bit Iffy, you can always rely on the horse. Mm -hmm. So two warriors, both incredible entrances. We've got our referee rings the bell. The horse, oh, the horse going for the discus brown house, not quite landing its target. The Irish whip from Garfield and a huge, beautiful drop kick taking down Garfield. Now, the unthinkable horse going for the fake out neck breaker. Instead, just a quick forearm to the back. And now, oh, beautiful flying into that. Uh, label lock crossface, not quite sure which, but it is not. Uh, it is not looking good. Garfield rolling out. That is indeed custom music um, for both competitors. Ooh, unthinkable horses on a tirade right now. 
And I think he's going up to the top. This is not good when a 500 pound horse is Phoenix splashing right on to Garfield. And again, Garfield's got a title match in two weeks' time. He wants to go in at 100%. And I don't think he can if he's going to take on enemies like the horse. Garfield rolling out of the ring to try and get a little bit of distance between him and his opponent, the horse. Not taking that lightly. Tope can't hero, but it doesn't quite get all of it. Just grazing Garfield. And the, the running lariat doesn't take the horse. Barely even touches the horse. And Garfield may have bitten off a bit more than he can chew. There's the discus boot. And Garfield may have... Uh, under underestimated the unthinkable horse because now oh powerbomb attempt maybe that was the three horse race attempt by the horse into the back body drop Garfield may be playing possum a bit but ref but still unable to get a firm lock up with the unthinkable horse and now there's the neck breaker, and once again going for the forearm to the back instead. Count then. The count has been broken. Both men returning to the ring. And now, unthinkable horse. He's got Garfield up on his shoulders. That hits the power bomb. Maintains. Is this the three horse race? There's the second and the third horse race. Unthinkable horse gets a cover. Only a two count, though. Garfield still able to kick free, but not by much. But the there's the, the slam. Unthinkable horse returning to the top rope. You try and big elbow drop, but the pool was empty. Nobody home. Garfield rolling out of the way. This is Garfield. This is Garfield's one and only chance, maybe. Oh, nope. waist lock. Horse. Powering out of it. And... Ooh, he's just being thrown to the outside by the unthinkable horse. Horse is in full control right about now. Garfield gets up to his feet. Horse is... He's planning for something. He hits the ropes. And... Tope Suicida through that middle rope. Chance of this is awesome. Ra rage around the crowd. And... Oh, this is not looking good. Gut wrench slam for Garfield. Let me check that prediction. Who is who is uh ninety-five percent to five percent wanting Garfield to win this or thinking Garfield will win this? I think a lot of people are gonna lose their whiz balls this evening. Cause this is not looking good for Garfield, but I gotta say. But oh Saying that, rolling out of the way of the diving headbutt. Oh, waist lock. German suplex. Oh, and the backflip kick. The horse has been dominant for about 90% of this match. And again, Garfield is trying to, trying to push back. But the horse is just a little bit too quick. Snap suplex into the cover, but there's the rope break. This is two cats 2019. I mean... There, Garfield doesn't have a butthole, so it's not dangerously Garfield 2019. Well, I mean, I assume he does have a butthole, but it's not on show, you know? Double axe handle to the face. And, oh, there's a slap across the face, but the, the rising knee strike avoided. He also doesn't have a tail. I mean, I think he removes it for fights because it's easier that way. He's, again, he's an eldritch entity. He, 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 he... His, his body is only what he needs at the time. And Garfield with the sheer force powering through the size and weight difference between him and the unthinkable horse. Referee up to a seven count now. Both these men could be... Oh, a knee right to the lower jaw of the unthinkable horse. Is Garfield going to break the count? Yes, he is returning to the outside. To, returning to this, this absolute brawl. 
Oh, DDT on the outside. And again, again for those of you that, that are new, those mats on the outside, they're like just a thin like inch. They're, they're just to provide they're just to provide the smallest amount of of cushioning between you and the concrete floor. You're not supposed to land on those head first. There's the 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 wrestling silly approved turkey dinner armbar there from Garfield. But, Re reminding everyone that he is, in fact, a gar a, a wrestling silly day one -er. And, oh, another DDT to, to, to the dome of the horse. Garfield back in control there. We're see we're seeing we're seeing now Garfield respecting the ability of the horse, fully appreciating that Garfield is not unkillable. The horse had his number for the first for the first act of this match, and now I think we've got a full power Garfield ready to go. I just hope he doesn't make this same mistake at Heatwave in two weeks' time, because if that if that's going to happen, then we are going to have. We're gonna have King walking all over Garfield, and that's not what we want. We want it. We want at very least a competitive match. Oh, there's the I'm sorry, John, out of nowhere. Garfield gets the cover, and the three count victory. Here is your winner, Garfield. But King, the world champ, coming out to uh, maybe congratulate the the challenger. On a job well done. And this is this is very tense between these two men. They've been they've been getting in each other's faces a lot the past couple of weeks. And now Garfield Garfield laying his claim on the title, but as of now, King of the World Champ, but all that could change in two weeks' time. That was one hell of a match. That was one hell of a match. You were stunned into silence throughout most of it. Yeah, I was. I'm sorry. I'm not good at the. <laughs> I'm not good at the mid-match stuff. Okay, and I'm going to be honest. I was thinking about impossible hot dogs. And... <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just got caught thinking about how much you want a hot dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically. <sighs> For shame. It's all right. You, you, you're, you're here. You're here for the, for the. Pre and post match fun times. I'll, yeah, I'm uh, sorry. I'll, I'll handle the. You, you can you can daydream about hot dogs all you want. <laughs> Why King got titties? Those are those are muscle titties because King is a is a is a big muscle. He's a muscly man. boy. Yeah, those are those are his big scary muscle titties. Um, yeah, I as, as, as much I, I was I was fearful for Garfield's title attempt during the first half of that match. I thought he was gonna abs gonna get absolutely squashed by by the horse. Gotta say, horse came up, ho horse came out like absolutely steaming in full gear. But no, Garfield Garfield got his number, took him down, and uh, laid his claim on the title there at the end. Speaking of people who have a claim laid on the title, we saw. Uh, a few weeks ago, Bayonetta had her smiley case taken off her by the current smiley case holder, number one contender for the Women's World Championship, Cruella DeVille. And this week, she is taking on a, a, a seemingly permanently on the rise newcomer to Wrestling is Silly, Bridget. This is uh, this, this is very exciting. We've seen Bridget come back. She came back. She got a win a couple of weeks back, and now uh, now both her and Cruella coming into this match with a big head of steam. Both of them with a lot of momentum. Only one can come out on top. Uh, who do who who are you putting your whiz balls on? I mean, I feel like you know. Don't get me wrong, Bridget is great and all that, but. Yeah. I mean, Cruella has got a long and storied history of incredible wrestling. Um, and I true. think that gives her the edge. I, I don't... That is true. I I mean, she, she has the smiley case for a reason. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Cruella left with the, with the dub tonight. I mean, there's no, the smiley case is not on the line, but... Uh, 
I can see her building a momentum for maybe a cash in at Heatwave. Maybe maybe she's waiting for an opportune moment to strike. But uh, yeah, this is going to be one hell of a match either way. Let's. Uh, I, I say we go down to the ring and uh, see how these two women go head to head. Yeah. Wrestling is silly. Your next match is set for one fall with no time limit. Making her way to the ring first from London Fashion Week. Weighing in at 165 pounds, she is the holder of the women's smiley case, Cruella Deville. Look at her, full of pep, full of uh, enthusiasm bringing that case into the ring. And now, again, not not defending it. It's not on the line, but she's still carrying it around to prove she is she is the one. I enjoy the black and white. Of course, that's fun. It's timeless. And her opponent from somewhere in England, weighing it at one hundred and ten pounds, Bridget. Yeah, almost, almost taunting with a, with that prance. I mean, you're not you're not wrong, Valerie. I feel like she's very much a, a, every move she does is intentional. Um, she is she is very much style over substance, but she still managed to get that competitive edge. Bridget, on the other hand, the other way around, she is all action, all business, no fucking about. So it's going to be interesting to see this clash of styles. Oh, the low drop kick, turning turning Krella inside out. And the double knees to the gut. Corella now being handled by the by the scruff of the neck by uh, by Bridget. Bridget with the Irish whip and ooh, slipping through the legs into the beautiful Hurricane Rana. And I mean, yeah, I'm not I'm not saying Bridget. I'm not saying sorry. I'm not saying Corella has no substance. I'm not saying she can't fight. I'm just. Um, she is she is far more style over she, she she prioritizes style she prioritizes that psychological mind game. I'm not saying she has no skill, but oh, there's the big splash. <laughs> <laughs> she the subtitles guy calling her Crayola. Um, well the subtitles guy. I mean, they're trying their best, but they got a got a manhand got got a, got a sort of manhandle this this mumbling and weird accent into into coherent subtitles i get it it's a rough job speaking of a rough job cruella stomping with those heeled boots into the gut of bridget and then just several shots across the face and oh Oh, that is a meaty lariat taking down Bridget Cruella with the cover. But just a one count. Blimey. Bridget powering through. And now oh, up against the ropes. Bridget grabbing the arm, wrenching the arm into those ropes. We say ropes. They're just like, they are steel cables covered in electrical tape. So that is not something you want to be, uh, be wrenching your arm against. Oh. Beautiful bridging that suplex. Gus gets the count. Just a two count, but that, that pin was there for maybe four or five seconds. Had Gus gotten that cover a little quicker, that would be a rare, uh, I would say an upset victory for Bridget. But the fight goes on. Corella now strikes uh, Bridget, avoiding the spinning back fist. And all oh, with a rolling forearm across the face hits its target. Corella with cover. Oh, she's Corella now. Corella. <laughs> Corella Deville gets the win with that rolling flying forearm. Here is your winner, Corella Deville. Textbook, textbook victory for Cruella there. No, no need for the Dalmatian damnation. No need for the canine mutilation. Just textbook wrestling from the women's smiley case holder. If if I were to to uh, 
you know, pontificate a little, and I'm uh, I'm not yeah. saying I'm known to pontificate. You've never pontificated. Never in your pontificated life, but go on. on this show. Um, I would say that there is that there was a a, a change of styles there for um, a change of styles there for Cruella. She's going a little bit more, uh, a little bit more just sheer substance mm. in that match, and I think she's trying to get in the head of the current women's world champ because. Amanda, with the Wii Fit trainer, our our current women's world champion, she is uh, a technician. She is strikes and she is submissions. And I can only imagine that Corella fighting like that, she must know that the champ is in the back because the champ is scheduled for a match later in the day, later, later on tonight. She knows the champ is in the back. She knows the champ is watching. So maybe trying to get in ahead a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just... Yeah, maybe. But uh, who who can say? Who can say? Um, moving on to our next match of the evening. We're in tag team action for the, our next bout. And the rivalry between Vicious and Delicious and the Springfield Sports Center. We thought it was going to be over with the Iron Man match. We thought that was going to be it. But after a contentious finish with the Sports Center declaring victory, we saw Mackie Chase attacking Homer Simpson after Homer's match a couple of weeks ago. We have seen this rivalry not over just yet because uh, with with the rest of the sports center, with Bob Belcher and Matt, they're currently on an excursion over in Japan, so they they are currently unavailable. Uh, Homer Simpson has turned to um, the team that the the Sonic Generations were scouting for the tag team title shots. Because if you if you remember, this whole thing was was started when the sports center were told by the current uh, wrestling silly tag champs, the Fight Boyfriends, to scout out a potential tag team to. Uh-huh take the title and that's that that got ridiculously out of hand and turned has turned into this very very bloody personal rivalry between vicious and delicious and the springfield sports center and now the the team that the team that the sonics were scouting uh the union the mm-hmm. oh, obviously we, we like Karl Marx still a little bit injured he's not quite ring ready so uh the un like the springfield sports center approached the union with the approval of, of sonic generations and said we need one more match uh, Vision Delicious, keep demanding one more match. My other two guys are out. Can I borrow one of you? So, in a rare confluence of two of the two of the wrestling silly world's favorite teams, we are seeing Vision Delicious versus Homer Simpson from the Springfield Sports Center and Abe Lincoln from the Union. The 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 Springfield Sports Union, maybe. Name a more name two more American yeah. than I'll wait on on this July the the day before they, American they, Independence Day. They should be like they should be a new tag team called like the Star Spangled Banner. Or the, something. <laughs> <laughs> the, okay, so who do you think is going to take this? Is it going to be Vish and Delicious, or is it going to be the Star Spangled Banner? And when will I Captain feel... America join the Star Spangled Banner? <laughs> I feel like if I say anything other than the Star Spangled Banner, the Americans are going to get upset. But on the other hand, <laughs> what's more American than a burger and some mac and cheese? That is true. They both are very American brands. This is the America match for Independence yeah, that Day. Is, that is so, God, we're really just giving our fans what they want. Yeah, got to give the people what they want. And what they want is for us to shut up and for them to go down to the ring. Yeah. So... Tag action. Let's fucking go. This next match is a tag team match set for 1 4 with no time limit. Making their way to the ring first. From a fast food restaurant in Madison, Wisconsin, at a combined weight of a pound of macaroni and 16 ounces of USDA prime beef the Big Mac Mackie Chase vicious and delicious personally as American I would rather have Mackie remember than my country than Homer Simpson I mean you're not wrong I would rather Mackie um but I we all love our sentient mac and cheese who whomst among whomst among us would not Mackie Chase is a man of earth. Yeah. He belongs to no one country. 
He is you by tie him down and like off that. the people. Yeah. And their opponents first. From Springfield fighting out of the Springfield Sports Center. Weighing in at 285 pounds, Homer Simpson. Again, when I mentioned this last week with, with I mentioned this last episode. When Homer's out with the Sports Center, it's it's they run out, they're all that they are no fluff, no pyro, no special yeah. shit. But when Homer's on his own, he do he does love to go a bit extra, don't he? Yeah, I mean he saves he saves up his budget, that's what's happening. Oh, is that it? Is that it? Yeah. So I just thought uh, I just thought like Matt Wee Sports was spooked by uh, spooked by the fireworks or something. Oh, may maybe that's the real reason, and they yeah. just said it was a budgeting thing. Maybe. Matt Wee Sports secretly a delicate soul. He puts forth this this big fight feel attitude, but secretly secretly a, a gentle soul. I also don't think he likes getting covered in soot, as Homer very clearly is now, from all that pyro. Uh, yeah, that, that I was gonna say that. <laughs> And his partner from Sinking Springs Farms, Kentucky, representing the Union, Abraham Lincoln. I feel like you should have just said that he was representing America today. <laughs> I mean, you can tell that just by looking at him. Yeah, I know, but you, Americans love it when you say that. That's a, when you say you're repping America. Representing. America! Yeah, Fuck yeah. See, look, they'll fucking love that. <laughs> You've got to give the people what they want. Gotta give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why Matt Wee Sports is in Japan for the fourth, because he doesn't like fireworks. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. He's taken him. he's taken his young boy Bob Belcher to Japan and in 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 an attempt to you know train him up but really to avoid the fireworks. Also, to avoid shenanigans, they have uh, Homer requested this was a straight-up tag match, not a tornado tag match, because he he after being jumped by Mackie Chase a couple of weeks ago, he is wary. So this is okay. this is. I, I kind of get that. We are usually a tornado tag team um, outfit, but this was at the request of Homer Simpson. Crowds chanting for Homer Simpson as he and Big Mac enter the ring. It would. It wouldn't be because you accidentally wrote the wrong kind of tag match on the on the form. Not at it? all. This was. This no. was Homer requested. Yeah. He, do, he doesn't want to get double teamed by both of and Delicious. <laughs> oh, Abe Lincoln with the big right hand, not quite able to to knock Big Mac off his perch. But that was that was a bit underhanded from Honest Abe. And now, oh. Really wrenching that neck, and now Homer exiting the ring as Mackie Chase becomes the legal man. Oh, he goes to goes to get Abe off the side, but Abe with the knee up <laughs> doesn't deter Mackie though. Mackie hitting that spear, and now Bo and now even though he sig he specifically said he didn't want to get tagged, get double teamed by Vision Delicious. Here we are, this <laughs> early on in the match, it is. The, it, oh, was it? The, the Springfield Sports Center Vision Delicious rivalry has gotten real, real personal real fast. Now there, the, the head scissors locking up Homer. Again, he cannot, he cannot submit on the outside. He cannot give up on the outside. So that's only try trying to wear him down, trying to get some of the last gasps of air out of him. Sling blade from Mackie Chase into the drop kick. Referee already at an eight count. Mackie gets in. Is he going to break the count? No, instead, getting the tag. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was just an, an onslaught. Mackie Chase and Big Mac getting the count out victory. 
Well, what's this? The wrestling is silly tag champs on the stage, almost sarcastically applauding that count out victory there. That's pretty fucked up, right? Mm hmm. And I mean, I would say, like, I, if I'm honest, I don't think, I don't think Vision Delicious were interested in that match being a match. They just wanted to continue their beatdown on Homer Simpson. Um, yes, I think I would agree with that from that display, because normally, uh, you know, wrestlers don't want uh, a count-out count win, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they, they they got the count-out win, but more importantly, I think they got the, uh, the beatdown on Homer, but they also got the attention of the tag champs. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. As, as I say, we have Heat Wave coming up. The tag champs haven't got a a dance partner for the ball yet. Um, maybe they've maybe they've just found one. Maybe if Vicious and Delicious maybe. can put this rivalry to one side, they could leave tag champs. And I mean, if there's no time like right now, they are. I would say the best they've ever been. They 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 have taken on Springfield Sports Center, pushed them to their limit multiple times. So, and I mean, I know Mackie has had runs with 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 Kiryu's uh, world title belt in the past, but mm -hmm. I think now they're better than they were then. I think I think the it, I, I I say this every time, but I think it might be Vision Delicious's time. Yeah, you think it's their time? Yes. You know what I think it's their time for what? Uh, fumble in the bag. Oh, they, they do like to fumble a bag. It's like they're, they are... Name a more iconic duo than Mackie Chase and Bags to Fumble. I'll wait. Yeah, you're right. They do enjoy fumbling the bag. Mackie Chase has had two <laughs> world title shots. He's fumbled the bag both times. He's been in ladder matches for, for now defunct titles. Fumbled the bag then. I can... I I can see I can see where you're coming from, but I think now more than ever, they look ready. I think if they can put this rivalry aside, focus on the titles for just just a week, that's all they need. But speaking of now defunct titles, we have a now defunct champion entering the ring. One of your one of your favorite wrestlers. Um, and that is one Darth Maul. Because since since having his title dissolved and since becoming just a sort of a wandering, a, a kind of aimless wrestler, Darth Maul has decided he's not going to take this lying down. He is going to get wins and wins and wins. He beat Bob Belcher. He was unsuccessful in the, in the three-way. Unsuccessful in the three-way against... Uh, Bob and Bugs Bunny, but now continuing taking on seemingly people with names beginning with B. After Ben, uh, after Bugs Bunny, Bob Belcher, now comes Bender Rodriguez, and Bender, a very very new person in wrestling, is silly, kind of still unable to predict what kind of a fighter Bender is. Bender versus Darth Maul. I think it's going to be one hell of a match. Um, who are you? Who whose side are you taking in this? If I have to ask, Bender Rodriguez. Bender bending Rodriguez. Uh, this he's clearly the bigger, stronger of the two. But Darth Maul again. He was he's a two-time flippy shit champion for a reason. Um, yeah. It's it, this I this. I, I I don't know what Darth Maul's um, current target is. If he's going for the world title, or if he's going for for a Twitch title, or if he's just trying to fuck shit up and find him and establish himself a new place. Um, maybe maybe he just wants to take down everyone in the roster with an name beginning with B. Who's to know? Who's to say? <laughs> maybe it'll be Blue Spy next week. But until then, let's get down to the ring for Bender Rodriguez, Darth Maul, the last match of the first half of the show. Your next match is set for 1-4 with no time limit, making his way to the ring first from the planet Dathomir, weighing in at 215 pounds, Darth Maul.
And again, I, I know you have a, I know you, you have a, uh, shall we say, complicated history with Darth Maul. You and him, not the best of friends. But uh, mm, Darth Maul, don't think I've ever heard of him, to be honest. <laughs> but you've got to, you've got to appreciate. He is. Uh, he knows how to make an impact. He knows how to make an entrance, and he is, as much as you hate to admit it, he is kind of a talented wrestler. Okay, Eden, I think you need to know something about me, and that is that if I don't like something, I can just close my ears and go la 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 and squeeze my eyes closed really tight, and then I don't have to accept it. You, don't, you have to admit or accept a damn thing. Exactly. Okay, that's fair. You don't have to you, you don't have to admit that he's a he's a good wrestler. I don't have to admit anything. I don't have to acknowledge anything. My, this is my superpower. This is what years of being in fandoms has done to me. <laughs> I just, I can canon just. I don't like doesn't exist. Not canon. Exactly. That's fair. That's 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 a, that's a hardened, uh, the hardened heart for canon. It also, that we don't like. I mean, it also just makes me immune to like misreadings of characters as well because it's just like. I just do the same thing, but with people. I love the block <laughs> function. The block function is great, actually. The block function is great. And his opponent from New New York, Bender, Bending, Rodriguez. Has he... Did he get permission? Did you give him permission to bring that in? No. Bender doesn't ask permission to do anything. I mean, last time I told him, uh, do you do you know what your cues are? And he told me to shut up, meatbag. Yeah, so... But he did know his cues, so I can't really complain. Did um, he then blow, like, a big cigar cloud in your face? He did, he did. Were you there? Yeah, sounds about right. You must have been there for that, because that's exactly how it went down. <laughs> and then after the after that very same match, as he was walking out of Gorilla, I said, Bender, that was a really good performance. You're 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 a natural. And he went, Can you believe it? He said, Shut up, baby, I know it. <laughs> and then blue cigar smoke in my face again. I don't Holy know shit. I don't know where he got that cigar from, but I feel like his mouth must dispense them. I, I would not be surprised if it did. Side rush and leg sweep, though, from Darth Maul. I mean, Ben, if, if not his mouth dispensing them, that, that chest compartment must just be stacked with them. A couple of bottles of Jack yeah. and a bunch of cigars. Oh, beautiful neck breaker, though, from Darth Maul. That is, that is if Bender has a neck to break. Oh, and the drop kick to the back. Darth Maul going at a bit of a slower pace than we're used to, but oh, beautiful rolling neckbreaker. Bender having to roll to the outside to try and get some distance between him and Darth Maul, the man with no fear, but Darth Maul leaping through Tope Suicida. Beautiful takedown. Oh, and the knee right across the, th right across the throat, right across the mouth, the cigar dispensing mouth. Darth Maul with the stompy stumps. Oh, with a shot across the jaw. Now Bender bouncing back and hitting the snake eyes to the apron. That's the hardest part of the damn ring. Is the snake eyes just hit their eyes on something? Yeah, hit their eyes on, cool. against something. Usually the turnbuckle, but the apron is just as good. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Be, I thought I thought that the snake eyes was specifically the turnbuckle, but Ooh. today I learned. Beautiful leaping stomp there from Bender, but only a one count. Bender clearly doing his research, knowing that Darth Maul appreciates a uh, an athletic, an aerial assassin. But he also appreciates the uh, made-in Dathomir with a very tight pin. Bender able to get out, though. And it was only a one count. Only a one count. <laughs> 
Ben Bender taking a big elbow drop there from Darth Maul. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Bender taking a big L. Bender taking like, a big don't L. Don't count him out yet. Don't count him out yet. <laughs> and now struggling to get back to his feet, but maybe just playing possum. Beautiful wrist control there from Mr. Rodriguez. And up ro Bender gets ro rolling Darth Maul onto his shoulder and just slamming him back down to earth. And the rolling for uh, Was that a forearm or was that just a punch across the jaw? I mean, it's punch is a punch, isn't it? That's true. Snake, snake, yeah, it's, it's Snake Eyes was the finisher of Vinny Vegas. That makes sense. Was wait, was Vinny Vegas Scott Hall? Am I right in thinking that? Vinny Vegas was Kevin Nash, yes, and that's why it's called the Snake Eyes because he was a Vegas-themed wrestler. Yeah. Oh, beautiful drop toe hold fake out there from Bender. Bender maybe getting getting control of the match finally rolls. Rolls Darth Maul back up and plants him back down. Now we've still not seen enough from Bender to establish his finisher, but this may just be it. The, the just hangman's choke, just dangling Darth Maul off the ground, waiting for all of the all of the blood to drain from his head, all of the oxygen to drain from his lungs. But Darth Maul able to just about get out of it. Oh, Casa Dora into the DDT. Beautiful. Yeah, Kevin Nash was Vinny Vegas. Scott Hall was the diamond stud. Uh, two two gimmicks that everyone remembers, of course. Uh, everyone, everyone refers to Scott Hall as the diamond stud and not, you know, Razor Ramon. Beautiful judo throw there from Bender. Oh, and just smashing Darth Maul's nose against the uh, whatever the fuck kind of metal Darth uh, Bender's legs are made of. But Darth Maul taking the opportunity. He hooks the arm, he hooks the leg. Made in Dathomir once again. Goes for the cover. Gets the win. That is an impressive victory over Bender Rodriguez. Here is your winner. Darth Maul! I am very impressed at how uh, uh, Darth Maul's current sort of trajectory. He did take the... He took the loss against uh, Bob and Bugs. But other than that, getting a, getting a victory over someone like Bender, who has been in the world title picture, that's very, very impressive. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I think if he's making his if he's making his claim on a title, we may be just a little bit too late because there are other men. I think Spider-Man already has his uh, already has his sights set on a potential uh, on a potential challenger for his Twitch title. But all will be all will be uh, elucidated in two weeks' time once we hit Heatwave. But that brings us to the end of the first half of the show. We're going to take a very, very quick three-minute break. In the meantime, please do uh, empty, your, empty your bladders, refill your glasses, get yourself a, get yourself a, a, a glass of chocolate milk um, and a Yorkie. But until then, I have one question, one question only for you, and that is who is that Pokemon? Who's that Pokemon?
back everybody to wrestling is silly it wasn't did you guess it was zach from above did you even hear zach say me from above or did the mics <laughs> cut out either way you were incorrect it was in fact a Rolts. um i completely lost my train of thought <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> that happens. If you, uh, oh, I had, I had this, I had this, I had this brilliant idea to get uh, to get more views on the channel. Currently, I don't know if you're aware, there is a a, a Twitch uh, tie-in with Final Fantasy XIV for the new expansion. Um, and to get items in the game, you got to watch some Final Fantasy XIV streamers. But if I set the game to Final Fantasy XIV and continue doing wrestling is silly. That would attract people in because there's no spoilers here. There's no there's no spoilers for the new expansion here. <laughs> and it, I feel it, like you'd have to do a special where you actually had Final Fantasy fourteen characters I in did, it. I looked I actually looked on the the WWE 2K23 creative uh, community creations thing to see if I could download any uh any characters to to justify that i did actually think about this earlier and unfortunately the only character i could find that had a half decent made person was such like a late game spoilers character yeah like if i could just like throw yuri Anjay and thancred and ishtola in there um or do like alphano and alice in a mixed tag match that'd be great but i have to make them from scratch and that's a whole lot more work than just downloading a fucking emma selk um or a xenos but alas maybe maybe next week <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there'll be a special a special heat wave match that's just all of the Final Fantasy fourteen characters, so I could justify <laughs> having it in the in the category. I mean Twitch Twitch does say it will ban you if you uh, mislabel your streams. But I don't think it ever has done that. I don't think anyone's ever been punished for mislabeling streams. To be fair, this stream is labeled as uh, WWE 2K24, which is definitely the game we're playing. Um, I feel like they put that in there as like... Uh, you know, there was that... What was the, that fucking gangster's name that got done for tax evasion? Al or Capone. That's, I did think it was Al Capone, but I was like... I feel like if I say that name... He's actually going to be an actor or something. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to make myself look embarrassing. Um, like, you were thinking of Al Pacino, two men whom I did used to get confused as a kid. Yeah, so um, I, I can't help but feel like they do that as some kind of gotcha. Yeah. I don't know what the gotcha <laughs> would be. But it's, it's, just to make sure, it's just to make sure the system works, that everyone's tagged in what they are, what they are actually streaming, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I suppose. But again, is somebody actually going and checking? No, how would they know that? Is. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 what all it's the honor system. As, what happens if you tagged us just chatting and you aren't just chatting? What if we tagged ourselves as just chatting? Right I mean, now? technically, we are just chatting. Um, yeah, technically, we are, but we're playing a game though. So, what would they do about true. that? that is true. Are they going to fucking banners come at the, me? The first half hour of the stream was technically mislabeled as a as not a just chatting stream when we firmly had nothing to do with the games. We were talking about yeah, hot dogs. exactly. So, what they're going to fucking do? They should come at me. They should come at you. Um, also, going back to Al Capone and oh Al Pacino. God. Okay. Oh, go on. Sorry. Um, as a kid, Al, Cap Al Capone, real life gangster, Al Pacino actor who plays a lot of gangsters in films it's almost like yeah. they wanted me to get the two confused anyway yeah. you were saying you were saying um talking talking about come at me fucking i had to try and explain to my mum earlier that there are some phrases that like mean things in fandom that like don't literally mean what they mean right so like if you say to somebody on the internet come at me come over you're not thinking like they don't actually want to fight you it's like a, a joke right yeah, yeah um and the same with like if somebody expresses like a fandom opinion and somebody replies and says like them's fighting words like they don't literally mean they want to fight you they just mean no it's like, called it's, 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 it's humor it's a humorous yeah, right so basically, my mum has been starting fights on fucking how like a uh, House of the Dragon, like fan group page or whatever, and or no, it was something it was something like that, 
Because somebody had like posted like, okay, what is an actor that you think was horrendously miscast for their role? And my mum's answer was Matt Smith in House of the Dragon. And like, oh, uh, somebody had responded and been like, them's fighting words. And my mum got genuinely a little bit like, what the fuck is she talking about? Why does she want to fight me <laughs> over fan opinions? And I, I was like... She like she genuinely thought this woman was serious, and I was she like, no. She thought this woman wanted to fight her. Yeah, and I, like, do you know what? It gave me this really weird, like, it was one of those reminders that you really don't know who you're talking to on the internet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I feel like that's part of a, a larger thing. Normally, I assume children. Yeah. Because, like, you know when people play like online games and stuff i always try like it, like so like final fantasy 14 since we're like you know i'm brainwormed you know if somebody's like really bad at playing the game i try not to be too judgmental about it because you know the game is 13 plus yeah so, so, so there can be children um, there can be the children game. and they're, they're guaranteed there often will be especially in like the free trial yes ones so like i always try and be uh, sort of like understanding and and try not to be a dickhead to people um but that like th that conversation with my mom gave me like an even more sort of i wonder if there's moments where i've said things like that and have actually like i have not thought about what i'm actually saying because it's so accepted amongst people i would say my own age yeah that like that has a specific meaning like i wonder if i've inadvertently upset someone older or younger than me that doesn't understand that kind of internet context for something it was it was a very strange conversation that gave me this really weird like vibe yeah that know. is that is an interesting vibe um I, I get what you mean though like again like i i instinctively know that the phrase them's fighting words like that is it's it, it's it's like um it's like if it sucks hit the bricks the the humor yeah. it's the humorous phrasing of it the unnatural yeah. phrasing of it that, that that makes you think oh that can't that's not serious that's just a bit yeah they're doing a bit um but yeah I I mean yeah. with the hit with the hit the bricks one at least the hit the bricks means just walk away yes right like it's not I don't know but like. I, just, I just wonder if there's some older woman out there that I've accidentally implied I want to fight. <laughs> um, uh, Jedi in chat, anyone else re uh, here read uh, Al Capone does my shirts in middle school? No, but I saw the cover and it got in and it got burnt into my memory so much that that is genuinely how I used to remember which one is which, Al Capone or Al Pacino. Al Capone does my shirts was about a guy in Alcatraz because Al Capone is a criminal. That was how I used to remember yeah, that. that makes sense. Um but also, yeah, like uh, I remember I was I was at I was at a networking event once and somebody uh somebody mentioned how they're they're usually like afraid to come to these networking events and how to how to get over that fear. And I said to them just remember, if it sucks, hit the bricks, you can just leave. And the guy running the event was like in this conversation as well and had never seen the image, if it sucks, hit the bricks, and just repeated what I said in the most like 50s, because it's a fucking 1950s ass sentence. And it just made me realize that like, he looked at me dead in the eye and went, Yeah, hit the bricks, toots. And, I, and, and, it, and it made me realize, Yeah, that is a really stupid thing to say out of context, isn't it? Nobody fucking talks like that. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Hit the bricks, toots. Um, but yeah, you never know who you're talking to. It might be a 1950s guy or it might be a woman that you, you just said you want to fight. Yeah. The internet's really weird. Mm -hmm. The internet is fantastic in many ways, but also has been really strangely... really strangely isolating from people. In that, like... You end up referencing memes that you've seen. 
that like other people in the conversation haven't seen. You know what I mean? It's like yep. you end up just saying stupid shit, and then like I don't know. Just, like sometimes I'm genuinely surprised if someone hasn't seen something. I can't think of something like an example off the top of my head. But there, like, there have definitely been moments where there's like memes that I think are like universal that everyone has seen, and I've referenced it, and then you know, like they, no, they don't know about it, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, it's then fun to get to show them. Yeah, you then get to teach they, them about a funny picture on the internet. They often age like milk, though. I feel like a lot of memes really are like of their time, aren't they? Yeah, they very much are. Potato, potato, de derg. Welcome to the welcome to wrestling is silly. Welcome to the the, the stupidest wrestling show on the internet. My wife okay, and I, moving... I promise the wrestling does happen. Yes. Sometimes I just go off on one. <laughs> My wife and I move in entirely different meme circles. It is wild. <laughs> yeah That's this fair. this is the thing right like i feel like there's like me and my me and my friends like we will like venn diagram meme yep. circle right so like sometimes like i'll be chatting with one of my mates and he i would say right so me and my mate luke i would say we are in the the most uh divergent meme circles because he gets a lot of his memes from tiktok he is a TikTok i'm not zoomer. on tiktok and you are yeah. a, you are a. I mean, I don't think he actually is a Zoom, like cusp millennial Zuma, Zuma. But anyway, um, so like he gets a lot of his memes off TikTok and stuff. So like he will reference TikToks, and I feel like I probably miss half of them yep. when he's like <laughs> referencing. It. Yeah, <laughs> I, he's referencing TikToks. I'm still referencing vines. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Can we get to the rest then? <laughs> yeah because we are here in in the second half of wrestling is silly and we are entering the second half like we entered the first half with an unthinkable creature fighting a beloved creature from your childhoods as bugs bunny is on a tear he won a brutal he won a brutal triple threat uh, in the last episode and now is continuing his march towards glory against the unthinkable sheep the most unhinged of the unthinkables and we talked about Garfield being uh, hard to plan for. Unthinkable sheep is just as hard to plan for, but I would say so is Bugs. Who are you backing in this in this match, rabbit or sheep? I feel like you've kind of got to back the unthinkables, haven't you? Like, I don't know. They've just got that certain je ne sais quoi to them. That's fair. That's very fair. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm team Bugs Bunny because I really like how Bugs Bunny has been going recently. But... Uh, Look, I just feel like in a match, in, like if I were to step into the ring with one of them, I just feel like I would come out with less limbs if I went in with the unthinkable. <laughs> That's uh, true. Well, any of the unthinkable. That's true. Whereas Bugs Bunny, I feel like I'd have a fighting chance. I feel you like I'd, I could at least like bite a chunk of his ear off <laughs> if you before get, he murdered you, me. You, you get know? in a ring with Bugs Bunny, you'd be hit with a big mallet, you'll be flat for 30 seconds, and then you'll pop back up and it'll be fine. Yeah. But anyway, let's let's go down to the ring to see who will win: uh, Acme violence or genuine real life violence. <laughs> this next match is set for one fall with no time limit. Making his way to the ring first from New Looney City, weighing in at one hundred pounds, Bugs Bunny. I'm better than the unthinkable sheep because whoever I bet on loses. Also, I have <laughs> no frame of reference for the phrase, give me my hat back, do you want to see Uncle Cracker or not? Um, uh, I don't know that one either. That's exciting. Also, did Uncle Cracker have a, have any more than that one song back in the 2000s? Um, I did not know that, that that band had a... Man band had a... Me, I, what, that's a one-hit wonder-ass band. That is a lan ass one-hit wonder-ass band. I've never even heard band. of them. They did that song, Follow Me. Follow me, everything is alright. I'll be the okay. one to tuck you in at night. You know that one. I feel like That's I probably one. do, but it's yeah. not ringing a bell immediately, so... And his opponent from out of this world, weighing in at 420 pounds, the unthinkable... Sheep. Country Western rapper. Yeah, that's it. Country Western rapper is Uncle Cracker. 
I'm now Googling Uncle Cracker. Last time, we referenced a one-hit wonder artist from the 2000s on this show. They became Knicks Tag Champions. I hope we we can't keep doing this. We can't keep doing this. Matt, Uncle Cracker, not the sound of the summer. <laughs> Steal My Sunshine by Len, still sound of the summer. Still sound of the uh, summer. They, they will, it will always be sound of the summer. Yep. Uncle Cracker is still releasing songs to this day. Incredible. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Beach Chair. Released May 31st, 2024. And there is the Bell Freya, the referee, in this match. Unthinkable Sheep towering over Bugs Bunny. If I recall correctly, he became a real shithead or became a more visible one. Well, he started out life as the turntablist for Kid Rock. So I think he was always wow. a shithead, let's be real. <laughs> and now, uh, Unthinkable Sheep really dominating the early half of this match. Bugs Bunny trying to get into a striking match with a, with a creature probably t uh, more, like four times like yeah four times his weight and like twice his size this is this is not going to go well for bugs he needs to use his speed his athleticism which again i know he's trying to get out of but oh that's gonna oh that's gonna crush your fucking thighs 400 pounds of sheep just just jumping onto your onto Ooh. your knees like that and now Ooh, the figure, figure four leg lock. Unthinkable sheep playing a an un, unlikely submission game. Like at this angle, we can we can't even see Bugs Bunny at this angle with the with the, the sheer mass of the unthinkable sheep. Bugs Bunny making his way in back into the ring, just narrowly avoiding getting assaulted on the outside, but right into the backstabber from the unthinkable sheep. And there's the just a, a, a kick to the gut, high drop kick takes him down, and there's the stomp right to the chest. This is this is not Bugs's game. Maybe Bugs 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 trying to Bugs trying to take this to the outside. That is oh that is a, a rough place to be if you Bugs Bunny, but he's managing. Hits the reverse DDT. And oh, big rising knee strike takes down the sheep, but he, he comes back. Bugs changing his mind, bringing bringing the sheep back into the ring. And oh, sheep gets the reverse reverse waist lock. Oh, just flattening Bugs Bunny gets an early cover. Two count, but a late kick out for Bugs Bunny. Sheep now climbing up to the top rope. Big double foot stomps. That's got to crush the rib cage of Bugs. Still just a two count. Bugs Bunny. He Bugs Bunny employs that double foot stomps off the top rope. So for for the sheep to now twice use it against him, that looks personal to me. But still, Bugs kicks out. And oh, the sheep get it really get. It, I think getting into Bugs' head. I don't think Bugs was prepared for the aggression of the unthinkable sheep. Oh, but Bugs blocking the drop kick, getting in some strikes of his own. Quick headlock takeover, and now just wrenching, wrenching that headlock. And there's the bounce crossbody, not quite getting the distance though, and that you sounded crunchy. There's a crunchy landing. I don't think that was carrots in his pocket crunching. <laughs> Couple of big meaty chops, but Bugs diving out of the way. The drop kick right to the to the gut, maybe to the yam bag. <laughs> but but uh, returning fire for the, for the sheep. Bugs reaching for the ropes. Intelligent moves. Doesn't have to exert the pre the energy to kick out. Just has to ensure that the referee sees it, as we have seen to be an issue with our with our referee crew in the past. 
The sheep urging Bugs to his feet. Bugs, though, not answering the call. We don't often see that. Sheep on the top rope. Big splash. 400 pounds of sheep dropping on you. Deep cover. And there is the win. And uh, I don't want to call it a squash match, but... No, it wasn't quite as bad as the squash match. For starters, it lasted a little while. <laughs> True. Here is your winner. Unthinkable sheep. Yeah, calling it a squash match might be a bit too a bit too harsh, but I mean there was 300 pounds of difference between these two men. So yeah, M J Pastelis, thank you for the raid. Thank you everyone from the Pastel Paradise. Welcome to Wrestling Is Silly. If you've just joined us, you've missed the Unthinkable Sheep valiantly. Uh, you, you've missed the Unthinkable Sheep um, going head to head against Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny putting in a valiant effort. But if you're new here, welcome to Wrestling is Silly. I am Eden. Across the desk is my co commentator and partner in life, business, and crime, Zach. Welcome to Wrestling is Silly. Every week we put on at least two hours of absolute nonsense wrestling. All of your favorite wrestlers, you know, Bugs Bunny, Karl Marx, Homer Simpson, a man made of mac and cheese. <laughs> all, the, all the wrestlers that you recognize from your youth. And yeah, welcome to the show. It's, it's absolutely wild. Thank you, MJ, for sending your, your crowd this way. Please do raid and run if you need to. I sure as hell need to after I stream. And if you have, if you are joining us from the raid, please do settle in, grab yourself some popcorn and a drink. It's going to get very silly. And did you know that only the, uh, the, the nicest, best, and most nice smelling raiders stick around? That's my, my piece of advice to you. Shall we continue with the show? Sure. Our next match of this evening is the, uh, I don't want to call, I, 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 we need to come up with a better name for this, but, but uh, up until this point, it has been the contractually obligated appearances from our Wrestling is Silly Women's Champion, We Fit Trainer. She, uh, she has this air of, she thinks she's better than the, than the entire locker room. So we really have to bully her into getting in the ring every, every single week. So I told her, if you're not here every two weeks, I'm stripping you of your title and you're out on your ass. So this week we see We Fit Trainer has uh, decided that she is going to capitalize on Princess Daisy losing her hardcore title to go, that's an easy target. I'll have a go at her. So this week, We Fit Trainer, the Women's World Champion versus Princess Daisy. Have you got a favorite for this match? I mean, I think I'm going to say Daisy. I really want Daisy. I think Daisy needs I, this. I would love Daisy to get to get this win here. Mostly just so that we can all have a little laugh at the Wii Fit Trainer. Yes. Um, but, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all of my eggs in Daisy's basket. As much as I want Daisy to win, I must remind you that two weeks ago, Daisy did get thrown through a hell through a hell in a cell um cage and pinned by princess peach for her hardcore title she's definitely not at the top okay. of the game but if you want to put all your eggs inside her basket then at least ask for well, first have you of course i would never do such a thing without permission um god you can't say anything on the internet without everybody making making it sexy <laughs> um I can't remember what I was going to say now, so you're just going to have to go down to the match, you vile <laughs> creatures. As you wish. Oh, right into the action. Cruella, oh, Cruella de Vil, uh, the, the wrestling silly women's smiley case holder, making her presence known in this match. Amanda, not at all happy about it. But uh, it seems all she wants to do is all, all she wants to do is sit down. So uh, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell her to leave. I, I, there's nothing against her coming to watch the match. I mean, if she's the smiley case holder, she wants to get a close a close look at Amanda in action. But that might have that might have thrown uh, Amanda off kilter a bit as we see Daisy getting the early upper hand. But uh, Amanda with an early cover. 
Daisy again. You can see that Daisy is not at the top of her game, taking two a two count to kick out of that early assault. And Amanda clearly not happy about the the about any of this. She's not happy about having to defend her. Uh, she's not happy about having to appear. She's not happy about Cruella showing up. Clearly taking that rage out on Daisy right now. Oh, a one count kick out for Amanda there. You know, getting, getting a bit of distance between her and Daisy. Not wanting to walk over to Cruella, though. Not trusting her presence. Quick backbreaker Wait, honestly, there. Honestly, that's probably fair. Yeah. I mean, Cruella's clearly up to no good. I don't trust her presence either. As, as, as Neil pointed out, a couple of weeks ago. Um, Cruella did attempt to kill over 100 dogs, so maybe we shouldn't that be trusting her. That is a lot her. of dogs. Maybe we shouldn't be trusting her. Um, that is a suspicious amount of dogs. That is a suspicious amount of, of attempted canine murder. Yeah. And maybe Amanda's in the right for not trusting her. Mm hmm Ooh, attempted shoulder tackle there by Amanda. Daisy just bouncing off it instead of, instead of going down, though. That's not going to be... That's not going to look good for the champ. And, oh, kick to the back by Amanda. This is, again, you can you can really see the rage. And, yeah, one is too, one is too many. Yeah, one, one, one attempt at canine murder is too many. But we see uh, uh, Cruella has taken, Cruella has taken uh, We Fit Trainer's title. This, this, yeah, this is this is more than I think Amanda wanted. But Amanda going for Cruella. This uh, Cruella very much trying to get in the head of We Fit Trainer, but Daisy, Daisy taking advantage of the situation to get a clear punch right across the face. And I mean, Daisy, former hardcore champion, she clearly does not. She's clearly not above. Uh, you know, going for the underhanded, going for the cheap shot, going for the more dangerous shot. And Amanda knew that when she signed this this match. But Cruella really trying to get in the head of the champ. Oh, beautiful handstand splash there from Daisy. We fit trainer getting up uh, back into the ring, right into a flying forearm from Princess Daisy. Amanda slowly gets back up to her feet. L quick lock up. Ooh, ankle pick from We Fit Trainer into not quite a figure four leg lock. Just, oh, oh, really wrenching that leg. That is a tight, tight lock on the knee and the ankle of Princess Daisy. Yeah, one, one attempting one attempt to dog murder might have mitigating circumstances, but at a hundred, yeah, that's a little bit beyond. It's a little bit beyond. Daisy gets the Irish whip and ooh, ass first assault there from Daisy. Daisy with the cover. We for train is still kicking out at one though. Daisy still managing to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a boogie in there. And now Princess Daisy ooh, roundhouse kick avoided. Flying forearm hits its target though. We fit trainer and Daisy exchanging entrances and exits, trying to get in each other's heads. And the tornado at EDT there from Princess Daisy. Hit Amanda, hit Amanda with the whole yeah. Hitting Amanda with the whole ass basket of eggs. And that basket's full of Zach's eggs, so that's gonna be a hard hitting yeah. basket. There's the penalty kick from Princess Daisy, but right into the rope break zone. Amanda very, very lucky there. Daisy wanting We Fit Trainer on her feet. And oh, that was a slam, a dunk of a flying fist. <laughs> what are you giggling at? I don't know. I don't know if anybody else's brain ever does this. But sometimes you want to say something and then you'll just like add a few letters here and there and the result will just make you giggle. And you said it was a slam dunk, and my brain went, Slammy Dunker. Slammy, <laughs> slammy Dunker. <laughs> that just made me laugh. 
That was a slammy dunker of a flying first. You need to start saying these things out loud. No, I slammy don't. Dunk, slammy dunker frankly, is, is, <laughs> is great, eh? <laughs> you know that fucking meme where the guy is, like, talking, and then there's the second dude that is, like, really weird, and then the third panel is just fucking them looking at each other concerned? Yeah. Th that is the constant fight that me and my brain are in. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we've been trying to flattening Daisy gets the cover. Ooh, but Daisy kicking out at two. Incredible. I think, I think, if if it gives the world more slammy dunkers, I think it's, I think it's a good thing that you, you just talk out loud. <laughs> oh, Daisy countering the limber up armbar. That is how We Fit Trainer has been winning most of her matches. This is looking good for Princess Daisy. Throat chop and into the Sarasa slam for Princess Daisy. Daisy, Daisy with the forethought to move da uh, We Fit Trainer away from the ropes. Very, very clever. Astute moves. Gets the cover. And Princess Daisy with the win over the champ. Incredible. I fucking told ya, dude. My eggs were safe. My eggs were all safe in that one basket. Here is your winner, the Slammy Dunker, Princess Daisy. I'm never going to live that down, am I? I the should never. Dunk, there's nothing to live down there. Slammy Dunkers <laughs> is great. That's genuinely a great set of words. <laughs> Never seen someone get the pin after having to drag their opponent. Yeah, Princess Daisy, that's Sarasa Slam. People underestimate that, but that's uh, I, I don't know how much of that win is is attributed to um, Corella getting in the head of We Fit Trainer um, because that obviously having your title stolen from you that is that is going to that's gonna you know get you off, catch you off kilter, but. We gotta, we gotta give it to, we gotta give it to, to Princess Daisy. Getting a pinfall over the champ two weeks after, you know, be having a arduous Hell in a Cell match with Princess Daisy. Yeah, the stiff punch to the face probably didn't help Amanda either, but that's one hell of a victory for Princess Daisy. Um, I, I'm very impressed at her, at her, like, since basically since getting the the hardcore title, I'm very, very impressed at how. Just hard hitting Daisy has been. Maybe, maybe she's just punched a ticket to wrestling in silly heat wave. I'm gonna have to consult the books, consult the the booking gods, and by that I mean Zach and Matt. Yeah. Um. Again, uh, but b before we continue, uh, new raiders, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, please do hit the follow button. You may you may see behind my head here. I'm two followers away from 750, and that'll make me very happy. I do like round numbers. So if you do like what you see, please do hit that hit that follow button. Make my ego just a little bit bigger. Um, but as you as you decide whether or not to do that, let's go on to our next match because one of our one of our sort of underdog heroes, one of our comeback kings, Goku, has been slowly like quietly in the background making his way through the snack pack uh, as of late he took down uh he took down the 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 gentleman mr pringle a couple of weeks ago and then in the last episode he followed up by uh taking out who was it who was it that he took out it wasn't it, it was mr pringle then it was then it was uh some oh, my memories my, i'm sorry i've lost my entire train of thought uh, oh no. <laughs> I've lost my entire train of thought. I do apologize. Um But uh like I said, the the Go Goku has been on a bit of a tear. He took down he took uh he took down uh Mr. Pringle and now he's got his eyes set for the Burger King. And I mean after the after the exiling of Pepsi Man from the snack pack, there is there is only two people left after after Mr. Pringle and the Burger King, and that's Waluigi and Luigi, and we all love Luigi. Um, so if that if that's Goku's ultimate target, I mean, since taking down Superman, Goku, he just seems to want good fights and a good yeah. fight between Goku and Luigi. Oh yes, please, gimme, gimme, gimme. Um, who do you think is going to take the take the win between Goku and the Burger King? Are you a fan of the Burger King? 
I like his impossible burgers. <laughs> oh, and it comes back around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's, it really is like we set that one up. Yeah, um, callbacks, callbacks. Uh, Im impossible burger. Yeah. Uh, or impossible, the, the impossible PR man that's clearly yes. in the chat. Uh, definitely wrestling up. is impossible. As you can see, uh, it, these things just line themselves up yeah. in this. Um, it, it writes itself. <laughs> it really does write itself. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like the Burger King. I like the Snack Pack. They're not... I don't know if they're Goku levels of, like, good, but I like them. I like them well enough. I don't... I think, like... They're not Goku level good, but I it is, is perhaps... Um, is perhaps Luigi Goku level good? Maybe. I think if he's if he's been uh what's the word? Um keeping up uh with his training and stuff, I think yeah. I could see I could see a potential win in his future. It'll definitely be the, the, the toughest match Luigi has had in a long time, if it does happen. Uh, yes. Um but either way before that we have Goku versus the Burger King. Let's go down to the ring for the penultimate match of this evening. Wrestling is silly, your next match is set for one fall with no time limit. Making his way to the ring first, from the planet Vegeta, weighing in at 215 pounds, Goku. Some might say, some might say that, that Goku should be in line for a title. Goku shouldn't be having nothing matches with quote-unquote jobbers like the snack pack that he should be in line for the twitch title or even the the world title mm. and maybe you're right maybe goku is the like world champion material maybe he should be taking on king instead of garfield at resting a silly heat wave but is that what goku wants I mean, that, that's what, that's really what matters, isn't it? Like, you know, whenever, whenever people on the outside make these kinds of speculations, I think it's really easy to uh, ignore the fact that wrestlers are actually people. Yeah, they have wants, they have needs. And what, what I think Goku wants is just good matches. Yeah. And his opponent from Jacksonville, Florida, weighing in at a quarter pounder with cheese, the Burger King. The Burger King, the Sneak King, as some may know him. Uh, not one we see in singles action very much. He is very much a tag team wrestler with the rest of the snack pack. But that doesn't mean he can't come out and, and, and have a good punch up on his own. We said the same thing about Mr. Pringle when he was uh, when he was in singles against Goku. But now, again, a rare, a rare, a rare singles outing for the Burger King. I, I, don't, I can't even remember last time I saw him. Even in even in a wrestling a silly ring, let alone in in singles action, he's been he's been on the indies a lot. Of course, him and the snack pack, mm. the snack pack as a whole came together in, on the indies, and they've maintained that indie streak um, basically every single week. That is a oh, that is a look. <laughs> I did not like that. I did not like that that slow zoom at all. I'm gonna fire the cameraman. <laughs> And Freya calls for the bell. Oh, series of kicks there from Goku. Big spinning heel kick, taking the Burger King off his feet. And then there's a ground and pound assault there from Goku. The cameraman is probably a union man, but no, no, no. The union is Abe Lincoln, Karl Marx, and Freddy. There's no, there's no cameraman in the union. And now Goku again with the ground and pound, keeping the Burger King grounded. He's seen on the Indies. He's been doing his research. He's been, he's been watching the Indies. He knows that the Burger King is an aerial fighter. 
So keeping him grounded like that is very, very, uh, very, very, you know, astute planning. Oh, and that was absolutely beautiful. That was a Joe Hendry smile. That was indeed a Joe Hendry smile from the Burger King. Say his name and he appears. I believe in the Burger King. <laughs> Don't worry. I know I've said the word say his name, but Joe Hendry is not going to be appearing on Wrestling is Silly. We have a we have a very firm no real wrestlers rule. Oh, Goku going for that going for that moonsault DDT. Landing on his feet, but still a little bit unwary, giving the Burger King an ability an opportunity to hit that guillotine off the top rope and get some momentum hooks the arm up for the suplex instead oh instead just slamming slamming goku on his back with that with the torque from that spin standing shooting star press from the burger king again we're seeing that aerial fighting style we talked about bk Goku rolls over the ropes. BK grabbing him by the head, hitting that spear. And Sunset Flip powerbomb over the top rope. Incredible athleticism from BK. And then just walking all over the Super Saiyan Kakarot. Goku goes up and then once again just slammed down on his back. Again, the torque really whiplashing the neck on the way down there. BK spending spending a moment to interact with the fans, but right into Goku's tope suicida, hitting the spine of BK. Goku goes for the neck breaker, sits out the neck breaker, which again whips the neck back. Really, really does impact it harder. Goku returning the king to the ring and spins out, flattens. Burger King gets the cover. Only a two count. Burger King, Burger King pushing free. Goku dropping his weight onto the arm of the Burger King. Grabbing him, picking him back up. Popping him up. And there, the spirit bomb. Deep cover. And that is all she wrote. Spirit Bomb, a beautiful power bomb to finish the match. Here is your winner, Goku. Nobody hits that power bomb like Goku does. Channeling the yeah, energy. I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it. Definitely not. Channeling the energy of everyone else in the world into that spirit bomb. An incredible way to finish the match. An incredible win. Another win for Goku. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm very much expecting to hear from him sometime soon to announce his intentions for wrestling a silly heatwave and or beyond. Um, I we just have time for one more match this evening, and it is the celebratory match for Princess. Peach, the new wrestling is silly, hardcore champion, as we've mentioned numerous times this evening. She won it in hell in a cell last week against, sorry, last episode against Princess Daisy. And now the new champ said again, I just want to, I just want an extreme rules hardcore match against anyone that will have me. Not for the belt, just for the love of the game. And who, who answered that call? But from Dimsdale, Vicky. So your, your, your headline match for this evening. The new champ, Princess Peach, taking on Vicky. Some may call this a Proving Grounds match. Some may call this Princess Peach just toying with her food. But I think this can only go one way, don't you? Uh, yeah. So even Sorry, though... Vicky. <laughs> even though two weeks ago, Princess Peach... Didn't go through the cage. Got thrown off the cage through the commentary table. She's still taking on all on go oncomers. And let's go down to the ring for our headline event. Oh! 
Wrestling is silly, your main event for tonight. It's set for one fall with no time limit. Making her way to the ring first from the Mushroom Kingdom. Weighing in at 150 pounds, she is the reigning but not defending Wrestling is silly hardcore champion, Princess Peach. Yeah, you gotta have Maya Vicky for stepping up. I mean, there was silence in the locker room when she said, who's gonna face me so I can show off my new title? <laughs> Absolute silence, but... Somebody said, all right, I love you. I love you. I think I could take you. Even though the title's not on the line. Yeah, the, the first, I believe the first piece of gold that Princess Peach has earned in her career. She's come ever so close being the smiley case holder, but unable to secure that bag until now. And her opponent from Dimsdale, weighing in at 134 pounds, Vicky. Again, quite a new face. Quite a, quite, a, quite a, if you pardon the pun, quite a green face in wrestling is still here. Not a lot of, not a lot of matches under her belt. But she's been on the indies. She's been in that GCW, that CZW. She's been, she's got a deathmatch, uh, deathmatch experience in the past, has Vicky. Um, but, uh... It's a different, it's a different ball game when you're going up against the hardcore champ. The, I mean, she's never done tournament of death. She's never done anything like that. She, she is, she is by all accounts very new to her career. Yeah. And maybe she thinks that she can, you know, break out with this match, and you know, more power to her if she does. Definitely got the attitude, got the crowd in the palm of her hand. Referee Freya rings the bell. Vicky goes for the lockup, lifts the champ up, and... Ooh, goes to the fall away slam, but Princess Peach reversing the tar reversing it into just a crossbody drop. And now the, the, the studded cleats of Princess Peach stomping at the back. Yeah, just getting in the ring with the title holder is a chance to get seen. If she can last, say, pff, over two and a half minutes, I think it'll be a success. I mean, this is a chance, even if not to get a victory, uh, to, to, to look strong. Looking strong in defeat is just mm -hmm. as important as looking strong in victory. And Princess Peach mounting and pounding. Not like that. <laughs> Peach now going, seemingly going straight to the... Plunder. Vicky stopping her in her tracks, but instead meeting gut first with the corner of the stairs. Vicky stop, trying to stop Princess Peach going for that baseball bat, going for the side rushing leg sweep. Vicky seemingly wanting to stop the... Uh, seemingly wanting to stop the weapons coming into play. Instead, going for the baseball bat. Princess Peach one step ahead, though. Oh, spinning knee, spinning knee across the face. That is innovative, innovative, innovative offense there. And now Vicky returning Peach to the ring, grabbing that baseball bat, avoiding the baseball slide. He's just cracking the champ across the dome, getting a cover. Oh, but only a two count. Oh. Princess Peach avoiding avoiding the bat twice now. Oh, not quite a successful third or the fourth time. Vicky, a natural with that baseball bat. 
Oh, but a Superman punch from Princess Peach makes her drop it. And now code, oh, not quite a code pink, sunset flip into, oh, into what an, a, a, a brutal submission hold there. Both the arms being cranked back, the neck being cranked. It's almost like a Mona Lisa, but not, uh, not a Mona Lisa, a, a Venus de Milo, but not quite. But Vicky using her long limbs to avoid rip cord forearm smash. See, this is the champ. This is the champ turned on and up to full gear. Mm -hmm. Peach going for oh, going for the knee, but nobody home. Peach though gets the knee, gets the boots up, avoids anything that Vicky had in mind. Vicky crawling her way into the ropes, but Princess Peach cracking the bat over the back of the head. Oh, rip cord lariat there from Vicky. Vicky now going back to the apron. What is she going to pull out? Hey, there's the steel chair, the great equalizer, but Princess Peach stopping her from using it. Leg lariat takes her down, gets the cover. <sighs> Only a two count. You saw on that leg lariat, Vicky's head smashing into the top of that chair. So it's a very, very opportunistic pin from the champ. Peach going back to the back. Again, cracking Vicky twice, three times over the head with that baseball bat. And once again, Vicky not in the best of positions. And there it is. I mean, being cracked right across the dome three times with a baseball bat, it ain't going to go. It yeah. ain't going to go well for you. Here is your winner. The Wrestling is Silly Hardcore Champion, Princess Peach. I mean, showing her dominance, what the, what a start of the run. Yeah, I'm not sure that qualifies Vicky as looking strong in defeat. I think you're right there, Boo. I do not think she looked strong in defeat there, but, you know, bless her for trying. God loves a tryer. Parker, welcome back. You just, uh, sadly, you've just f missed the main event of Wrestling is Silly, so we're going to be wrapping up for the evening. I hope everyone has enjoyed the show. If you do, in, if you have enjoyed the show, you can do a couple things for me. First off, first of all, follow the channel. It's the easiest way to, uh, it's the easiest way to, to support the channel. Uh, hit me with a follow. If not, uh, if you want a little bit more uh, if you want a little bit more of the the wrestling silly world in your life, join us on Franz Island uh, Discord. Shout out is not working. I do apologize, but there should be a link in the down below, uh, and we'll we'll drop a link to the Discord just before we go for a raid out. If you have a little bit of spare cash and you do want to help out, uh, I could say subscribe to the channel and you'll get emotes and stuff. But if you've got better Twitch TV installed, you'll get all those emotes anyway because I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If you subscribe on Twitch. Twitch steals half your money and gives it to Jeff Bezos instead of giving it to me. And Jeff Bezos, I'm not sure if you're aware, has enough fucking money. So I advise, instead of instead of giving me uh, $5 a month on um, on Twitch, because if you give me $5 a month, I get about $2.25 of that. If instead of giving me $5 a month on Twitch, you instead give me $5 a month on Kofi, I get about $4.75 of that which is a far better margin, and you get perks for it. You get a special role in the Discord. Depending on how much you get, you get your name in the credits. You get uh, you get a special role in the Discord. You get, maybe you get to book a matter and wrestling is silly. Maybe you get your, uh, you get to put art on the mat of the wrestling is silly ring, be it your, your podcast, your Twitch channel, your Etsy shop. Um, you might even get to be put on wrestling is silly itself. You get to uh, tag with your favorite wrestler. All those perks and more available at our Kofi, where you can also find fun wrestling is silly merch. So, if you do have a bit of spare cash, I would say go for the Kofi. It's better than subbing on Twitch. But if you don't have spare, if you don't have any spare cash, tell a friend. Tell a friend how cool this show is. Tell a friend that it's the weirdest way to spend a Wednesday night. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's all I have to say on the Kofi. Do you have anything to plug, Zach? Uh, no. Wrong. Etsy shop. <laughs> uh, you normally plug that, so I don't feel like that's on me. 
me and Zach, uh, me and Zach also run an Etsy shop, thenerdyqueer.com, uh, where you can find a bunch of, well, nerdy and queer things you can find yeah. in enamel pins that say she, her in the she logo. It's very funny. Or, or a, a Splatoon pin that's got a trans flag on it. Or a, Yak- a Tojo clan pin from Yakuza that's very gay. It's all, yeah. all that and more available at, the, at, at nerdyqueer.com. That's, that's what keeps Zach in a job. So, so go spend money there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go find a channel to raid into now. I know exactly who I'm going to raid into. I'm going to raid into our good friends over at Blizzard Comedy. They are doing Blizzard Comedy's Broadcast Avalanche, their their digital panel show. Um, it's like Mock the Week, but sl- but more leftist and more online. So if <laughs> anyone's if anyone's going to reference a meme for a punchline, it's going to be there on uh, Blizzard Comedy. Speaking of digital panel shows, uh, if you are on the Facebook, first of all, I apologize. But if you want a um, if you want a fun comedy panel show that's vaguely UK election themed, um, tomorrow night at eight, uh, seven at uh, uh, eight pm on Facebook Facebook dot com slash Alternative Cobra Meeting, uh, me and several other very funny comedians will be doing the Alternative Cobra Meeting election special. Um, so yeah, that's that's streamed over on facebook it's going to be funny it's going to be topical i'm going to be there and some funnier people than me are going to be there as well but we're going to read into we're going to read into blizzard comedy so uh so go go say hi to them they're great they're lovely they're all very funny um yeah and like i said there's that link to the discord join us there uh drop the words queer pirate raid into the blizzard comedy chat when we send you over there but until then we're going to be back for Wrestling is Silly next week for the last show before Wrestling is Silly Heatwave. But until then, Buccaneer, Buccafar, or the book you are, I hope you're having a fantastic rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next stream. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And love you, bye. Bye.